So here's what we have so far. I want to suggest to you that the Hebrew alphabet tells a story. It's not just learning a language. He's so incredible. He's so much bigger than we are. He's so much smarter than we are that he puts our spiritual journeys that are built into the Hebrew alphabet. In other words, from Aleph to Tav, the Aleph Tav, okay, from the very beginning to the very end is the story of all of creation, and it's your story as well. And at the end of teaching on the Hebrew alphabet, I'm going to go back through and in one session teach you that every Hebrew letter has its positive meaning. And how many know that Hasatan, Satan does what? He takes it and twists it into a negative meaning. Meaning. So what you can do is if you have a particular problem in your life, uh, let's say that it's lust, is a problem in your life, you can find the Hebrew letter that the enemy twisted and that's what letter you're stuck on. If you can't go any further, so how do we fix that? That means you go to the previous letter and you can find out what happened to your life that caused you to be stuck on this letter. So I'm going to show that at the very end of, of, uh, of teaching on Hebrew, how every Hebrew letter is, is connected to your life. I'll prove it to you just in the first five letters. Here's how it works. And this is just amazing how these fit together because it's telling a spiritual story. Aleph, the head of the house that gives to the poor man that brings revelation, okay? Until, let's say that you have issues uh, in your house. Bingo, you have to go back to the bait and you're gonna discover, now we can go deeper on that, but you go back to the bait and discover that you're probably not being the head of the household. You're probably not being the spiritual head of the household, so your house is broken. Until you are the head of the household and your house is in order, you'll never be able to give in faith the way that you're required to give to anybody, and so you squelch revelation in your home. You squelch uh, being, being able to be rise above, okay? So everything in the very beginning, go figure, the very first three letters, did you know that every Hebrew word, the majority of, of, of all Hebrew words can be reduced down to three uh, root letters, okay? And so it should not surprise you that, there, that if that's true, which it is in Hebrew, that the very first three letters of the Hebrew alphabet should have something incredibly significant to share with us. So if there was no other letters, because everything can be reduced to its root, then the first three letters, look what it says. The head of the house gives. That's it. That is the significance of the underlying of all of Hebrew. If you are a Hebrew, this is what we do. Hebrews give. They love. They, they shake hands. They hug. They stop on the side of the road and help someone when, they're, when they have a flat tire. They go above and beyond to change their schedule for someone else. They look beyond themselves. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, and self-control. That's what we do. We give. Do I need to say all that again to get an amen? Oh my goodness. Okay. Come and join us as we travel back in time 4,000 years ago to discover exactly where the holidays of Christmas, Easter, and even Valentine's Day come from. Why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus on December 25th? Whose birthday really is on December 25th? Where did we come up with December 25th? Where did the star on top of the Christmas tree come from? Where did the Christmas tree itself come from? Where did St. Nicholas come from? Are we sure that St. Nicholas even existed? Have you ever wondered where the famous phrase ho, ho, ho comes from? It comes from the late 1600s when they used to have plays and before the devil would come on stage, he would announce himself by saying, ho, ho, ho. Did you know that original Santa's elves weren't little guys that made toys, they were Krampus demons that would punish the children if they weren't good for that year, while St. Nicholas would give them gifts if they were good. Who is the Easter Bunny? Where do we get Easter eggs from? Why do we celebrate Easter on the first Sunday after the vernal equinox? Did you know that Christmas was illegal in the United States until the mid-1800s? Can we celebrate these holidays according to the Bible? This is by far the most popular video on the internet on the history of Christmas and Easter. 
This video has changed hundreds of thousands of people's lives and it will change your life too.